Hello, welcome to the stream. I know burnt toast, it's not a Monday night. What's going on? I'm just trying to mess with your head, mess with your schedule, make you think it's a Monday. It's not. Um, yeah, no, it's uh, it's a Sunday. It's a weird time, but it's a, it's a good time. I'm uh, I have some stuff going on this week uh, that was happening on Monday night, so I figured I would push the stream to Sunday uh, because your boy got deadlines both in the real world and in the keyboard world. Um, so yeah, we're here, we're chilling. It's been a crazy week. Um, how have you guys been? It's been, it's been busy for me. My, uh, my wife starts school tomorrow for physical, uh, or for physician's assistant or PA school. And then, um, yeah, I don't know, just between like trying to get our house done and, uh, selling our condo, it's been wild, but good. Good to hear you're doing well, Burnt Toast. I'm good. Happy to have you here in chat. Thanks for joining me. Um, today is going to be a bit of a wild one. Uh, because we are building a, actually two boards. This, this is a commission for one of my moderators, actually, uh, TRD Kyle. He may or may not be in the chat today. He's actually moving, uh, this weekend or packing to move this weekend. So I don't know if he'll be around, but, um, yeah, we're building a Nolbits nibble, which is a 65% through hole board. Uh, I have one personally that I like very much. This one actually is cool because um, at the time, I don't know that I was able to buy a uh, an FR4 plate, but this one I was, so that'll actually help a lot. Um, we're unboxing it, as you can see. Um, I uh, It's funny, normally I'll open up these boards and I'll test them, you know, make sure that everything works before the stream, but with with a through hole board like this, you know, you can't really test it because you have to build it in order to test it. So, uh, no real sense in opening it. Oh, Hey, holographic octopus. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. That's really cool of you. Helps the stream out a lot. Um, I like that username too. That's really cool. Um, cool. We have a parts list here. Um, I will say of all of the vendors and designers that I've worked with, I really like Nolbits. Jay from Nolbits is great. He's personally helped me with issues that I've had in the past with the board um, and been very responsive. And um, yeah, he's really good in Discord of you know letting you know when restocks are happening. So pleasure, pleasure to work with him. Um, so I'm very happy to be building another board. So having said that, we are actually building two things today. I can't. I think I put the title of the stream correctly. We're building a Keeb IO BDN nine macro pad as well. So this is a bit of a twofer. So we, all that to say, we should get a move on and uh, get this thing put together. But yeah, happy to be here. Happy to be hanging out. So let's grab this out first. So these are gonna be all of our components, little sticker, that's cool. I will include that for Kyle. Um, oh, cool. Help at nullbits.co or the subreddit. Yeah, that's true. There's also a, a fairly active subreddit for these boards, which is cool. Um, but this is your base kit that you're gonna get. Uh, it's got an acrylic layer between the PCB and the bottom plate. And then there actually isn't a, um, there is not a plate, like a switch plate, but you can get those now, an FR4 switch plate, which I have. So let me grab that out. I got so much keyboard stuff under here. All right, we have a lot of nonsense in this box, but among it is this switch plate. Uh, and I actually think, yes, I do have this BDN9 here as well. So what is all this stuff? Oh, that was part of a barley corn that I built. And these, it looks like this is padding for hot swap sockets. Oh, for the DZ60. I got so much crap in here. It's cool though. Always have spare parts. So yeah, that's what we'll be building today. Um, but we will begin with the nibble. So first and foremost, we're gonna need stabilizers. This is a 65% keyboard. So it will need three 2U stabilizers and one 6.25U stabilizers. 
one of the neat things about the nibble is that there's actually I think at least three configurations for the like the bottom row with the space bar. There's um, a split space bar with a center key, uh, and there's a couple others. There's, I think there's a seven U if I'm not mistaken. So um, yeah, there's you got options if you're building this thing, which is cool. On mine, I have the split space bar with the center, which I think is neat. But you know, you can do whatever you want. So let's grab out our stabilizer stash. Dropping stuff. As you can tell, I am patently unorganized right now. Let's also grab our lubricating tools and a paper towel. Okay. So I think I might actually holy mod the um, space bar stabilizer just to make sure that it doesn't make any noise whatsoever but I will leave the others alone. So I believe I have two, which we need four of these. But fortunately, I have been on Mech Market and I have been buying up stabilizers there. So I should be able to get what I need. Go with that. And then two of these. Actually, I might be able to just use this gold kit. Why don't I do that? This is a, uh, I bought this TKL kit on Mech Market. Here's a fun fact for you. Um, if you want to post on Mech Market as a vendor, um, and not a vendor, but a um, like a service, like someone who builds keyboards and uh, try to get clients that way, um, you can do that, but apparently you have to have had at least four or at least 20 confirmed trades on Mech Market which is a lot. So I uh, had to start just like buying stabilizers and stuff on there, trying to work my way up to 20 so that I can actually post on there, which frankly is a little bit annoying. That's actually, these are all 2U. Um, oh, that's right, I bought these online. I just bought a pile of 2U stabs online. Let's use these. Hey, what's up, Furry? Good to see you. Has your PCB arrived yet for that uh, that board you were talking about? That TKL, I believe you were building. There we go. I'm good, thank you. Good to see you. So we'll go with the 6.25 and then the these four. Actually, we only need three. These two wires can go back. Not here, bummer. I guess it is, was it from AliExpress? 27th, okay. That's not too bad. What time is it for you right now? Cause you're, where, and aren't you from, I actually don't remember. Sweden, maybe, I'm guessing. Finland, I don't know. Go on. Not America, that's what I know. All right, not trying to dox my followers or anything, but. All right, one, two, three, for that's enter, left shift, backspace, and then space bar. And then we'll get these pairs. So one, two, three, four, great. And then we'll get the screws for them here, everything else. Oh my goodness. Well, I appreciate the support. That's very kind of you. Hope you get some sleep. That's wild. It is 6 p.m. here. All right, got some coffee. Trying to stay awake. Not, I don't need it as bad as you do, but my goodness. All right. So let's grab tweezers and expanded. What happened to my scissors? I had some. Were they stolen? Oh no, here's some more. Good. You always gotta have a backup. Okay. 
So we are going to just do this to the two housings that belong to the the spacebar stabilizer. All right, there we go. I have this kind of looped through here and then we'll tuck it over there. Boom, it's just like that. Same thing on the other one. Fortunately, these are not pre-lubed, so the, the adhesive on this Band-Aid actually sticks. That was the issue I was having last time. tip here and then we hold it into the inside that's how you can reduce a decent amount of noise on a spacebar stabilizer I, uh, I I was very skeptical of this mod until I did it for the GMMK Pro and it helped a ton uh, I was very surprised and it didn't make this make the stabs feel mushy at all which is kind of what I was thinking was gonna happen. So um, I don't find it to be particularly necessary on two U stabilizers, but for seven and six and a quarter, seems like it helps a lot. So it's got my recommendation at least. Um, it does seem like it needs a, 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 a touch of break in. It's not, a lot but you know something to be aware of we are also building this with box royal switches today which are a tactile box switch from kale and novel keys so that will be that'll be cool i could want to like almost tilt this a little bit like that so i could reach under it easier apologize for the noise all right and then we just need some lubricants some of this some of this And then we just got four stabs to do. All right. Okay. We just gotta lube the inside of these housings. The outside of the others. There are no stabilizers on the macro pad, so this would be sufficient for what we're doing tonight. It's kind of weird streaming on a Sunday, but you know, I don't mind it. Chill vibes. Got work in the morning, but you know, we can think about that later. Right now, we're just building a keyboard. Happy little keyboard. I That would be a fun, actually. I would totally watch Bob Ross build a keyboard, you know? That'd be cool. Or Rick Ross. That would also be cool, but in a totally different way.
frankly, I feel like Bob Ross got me through college. Like I watched the joy of painting. There was actually a Twitch channel that was streaming it um, like around the clock. And so I used to like during finals week, I'd get really stressed out. So I'd watch how it's made uh, on YouTube and I'd watch Bob Ross on Twitch, which was really fun. I enjoyed it. That was a long time ago. I don't think you could do that anymore. I don't think you could have a 24 seven Bob Ross Twitch channel, you know, but you know, it was a wild west back then. Or even before then, did y'all know that Twitch used to be called Justin TV before it got purchased? That's a fun fact for you. I think Twitch is a better name, but Justin TV, wild. <laughs> okay, one more outer housing. And then we'll move on to the inner stems. I don't really know what the official name is for those parts. Like the, I just call them the housings and the stems, but really I should probably look that up. I feel like that's like due diligence, you know? Okay, so let's start with the space bar stabilizer so that I, I get that out of the way and I don't mess it up because that's the only one that I did the holy mod for. So we need to make sure that we get that one done. I'm also not shipping this to the client with keycaps on, so that means we get to put whatever we want on for the sound test, and I have chosen Cam Wraith keycaps, which I'm pretty excited about. So that is today's cap of choice for this build. Cam profile, I feel like, is not one that you see very often. These are, yes, these are Duroc V2 screw-ins. Um, I feel like you don't see cam profile a ton, but I like it because it's it's basically a uniform version of the cat profile. So they tend to be nice and thick, so they have a good sound to them, but they're also uniform. So you can use a single, um, you know, any cap can go anywhere, if that makes sense, because it's the same profile. But yes, I do, I love Duroc V2 screw-ins. I've, I've used a decent amount of stabilizers. I like the C3 stabs a lot too, but I, I kind of don't feel like they're worth it because they tend to be more expensive. Uh, I, I mean, it's just Durox are great. They work very well. They stabilize them keycaps. I did see, um, I don't even know who it was. It was somebody on my Instagram, a keyboard content creator had posted, I think it was Zambuer Zamburon, I think is his, how you pronounce it. It's the guy who, he's the designer who did like um, Striker, I think. Like that's the most notable keycap set, which is a huge and immensely popular set, but um, GMK Striker. But um, he had posted about these things called Stabies, which I don't, they were interesting. They seemed like they had a lot tighter of a tolerance between the housing and the stem itself. So if Stabies are ever a thing, I'd love to get my hands on some and try them out. I, he, he didn't seem to think that they were like, a huge huge upgrade over like your traditional Durox stabilizer but um they definitely look, looked interesting so i will um i'll check those out at some point if they are available for public sale or if they go in group buy or something okay so here is our 6.25 unit stabilizer let's grab our uh oh let's grab our others yeah they make a huge difference frankly i feel like um, they are, they are a game changer for sure. The nice thing is if you have, um, if you have, oh, by the way, I, I think I was talking about this last stream where I was, I was waxing poetic about whether or not Duroc made plate mount stabilizers. Cause I was at the time I was working on a, um, a pre-built and I was replacing the, the plate mount or I was lubing the plate mounted stabilizers, but I didn't really like them. And I was wondering if there were some higher quality versions. It turns out Duroc does make plate mount stabilizers. So that would be an interesting thing to try out. But then also just um, 
if your keyboard does have PCB mount stabilizers, that's a huge thing you can do is put in Durox or even just lube them. Um, it helps so much. So highly, highly recommend it. If there's one thing you do to your keyboard, um, take care of your stabs because the like a rattly space bar is, is very hard to listen to, so. That's my opinion, but I mean, I feel like you hit the space bar more than most keys and when when it rattles it's also very loud because it's a large key so that combo really makes it a uh, high priority for uh, improvement there's a lot of things in the keyboard world that are like you can spend x amount more time to improve it by five percent and it becomes a question of diminishing returns very quickly but stabilizers aren't really that way again all my own opinion but okay there's a two u so cute you love those two u's <clears throat> getting there I was never really a big fan of the um, the goat stabilizers from glorious I did try those out on a GMMK Pro and I did try to tune them but the tolerances weren't quite as tight I didn't feel um, which kind of led to them being a bit more sloppy and had you know the more play that you have the the higher likelihood of, of some sort of mechanical noise so, but they are one of the only, I mean, one of the main, not main, I guess. I, I don't know that people would go out and buy them if they were going to go out and buy stabilizers anyways, but like they are a competitor, which I don't know that there's a ton of C3 obviously, but they tend to be more limited run, small batch, or even like a group buy type thing. Like occasionally they'll do a drop on like the key company or something, you know, there'll be a little batch of C3 stabs, but it's not like you can just there's there's a lot of vendors that actually do um sell durox stabilizers um in fact i've gotten them from divinity i've gotten them from um prime kb but i've seen plenty of others that that also carried them so um there if you're willing to find them you know and and then the, again like i've been going on my, i just need to get transactions confirmed so that i can advertise my services again but um, there's a lot of people selling them on rec market too if you're willing to sift through that stuff and find them I got some c3 stabs from mac market which is cool they're like the Tiffany blue color which is neat so if I ever do like an aqua um, Telios build I think they'd be perfect which I, you know I've, I've kind of shared how I feel about zeal PC before I think they're too expensive but I think those are so pretty um, those like Tiffany Blue, Aqua, um, Telios are just gorgeous and I would love to get my hands on some and build something with them. Especially if it was like a teal board and just like teal theme. Kind of like that orange um, barley corn that I did with um, with uh, tangerines. So that was really fun. Even though you'll never really see them, but. I might use. Night cream is lube for stabs. Night cream. I don't know that I would do that. And here's why. Um, like lotions and things like that tend to, if I'm understanding you correctly, and you, by night cream, you mean like a, a lotion or something. Um, the, the key ingredient for what you're looking for in like a lube is that it doesn't dry out over time. Um, so a grease like Crytox tends to, um, tends to, or it doesn't dry out. That's what makes it work for a long time. Um, 
This is something I found out later because it, it's very common for people to use dielectric grease in stabilizers, but that will eventually dry out, leaving your stabilizers really sticky. Um, but I will say if you do use like some sort of a, like a lotion, definitely post it on the mechanical keyboard subreddit because I think a lot of people would find it funny. Uh, so, you know, if you're just trying to get some karma on Reddit, that's a good, that'd be really funny to try. I saw a guy who was using, he was using butter on keyboard switches. Uh, I think they were like um, uh, yellow inks or something, or maybe not even. It was my, maybe like milky top yellows that he was, he was using butter on, but, but that just, it made me laugh. So, okay, that is the completed lubrication. So now we're gonna move on to building the nibble itself. So let's grab that. Here's a little trick that I've learned that I have never actually done before because I always forget, but let's do it because I'm remembering. First, let's get this out of here. I believe this is the updated version of the acrylic layer. The issue that was um, found in the previous version of this acrylic layer is that it didn't fit the screw on stabilizers so it would split um, which should happen to mine it's not noticeable at all so it doesn't really bother me but um, just something to be aware of you use butter on your stabs okay I mean butter will eventually go rancid so you know there's that but it doesn't uh, dry out in the same way or well it kind of does doesn't it I don't know what I'm trying to do is encourage you to try this so I can see it without really saying it's a good idea. Wink, wink. You can get Crytox on Amazon, but it's um, very expensive there. And they don't have the grade zero. Uh, so you have to kind of make your own by either mixing it with GPL 105 or um, yeah, I mean, that's the way you would do it, so. All right, so just looking at this right now, I believe this is uh, the right orientation. And then I believe this is the way that the PCB faces because you want to have the encoder on that side. Therefore, this acrylic layer goes like this. The trick that I'm referring to that I always forget to do is to take the plate. Let me grab out the, there should be, Actually, I don't know if there are um, little bump on rubber feet. There may actually not be any in this kit. Okay, that is fine. Um, some kits come with here. I'll tell you the trick anyways, even though it doesn't apply to this. Some kits come with bump ons, which are like little rubber dots that you stick onto your bottom of your keyboard so that it doesn't scratch a wood surface or something like that, or it just gives it more traction. So if you're pushing it around like you're playing games and getting real intense with it. What you can do is take uh, the plate, the switch plate like this, and you can use it as an alignment tool because you can see like I could stick the bump ons in these square corners here and just like get everything lined up nice. Kind of a, a slick trick, but I've uh, always forgotten to do it, but this kit doesn't actually have bump ons. So we are going to, we're going to put these three layers aside for the time being, because I believe we're gonna start with this guy. So this has um, WS2812Bs, I believe, for LEDs. Yes, WS2812B, you, gotta, you love them. Individually addressable LEDs, they're really cool. You can get them in giant strips. Hi, Shadow, it's going well. Thanks for stopping by. Um, we got the stabilizers loop so far, but now I'm just, uh, I'm about to dive into the, um, to the actual build. So I believe the first thing we're gonna do is solder on the underglow LEDs. So let's get my soldering iron out. Now these are surface mount components. We are using Duroc V2 screw-in stabilizers. They're up here on the top of this soldering mat. Um, just got them lubed, lubed up with Crytox and then, um, yeah, we'll be rocking and rolling when it's time for them. But wanted to get all the lubing done out of the way completed early on. All right, and then let's 
Wake that up. I love this thing. I, yeah, yep, it's V2s. Uh, can you, uh, question, is it, do they have the V2s in the smoky color? Or is that how you tell the difference? I'm pretty sure they have them in both because I'm pretty sure I have smoky V2s, but I can't remember if they, if those are just V1s. Um, I have a big inventory of stabilizers and I should probably sort them out, but okay, cool. Do you know what they really change between V1 and V2? Cause I actually haven't looked that up. So we are gonna need tweezers for this. Um, as I said, these are surface mount, not through hole components, meaning that they sit on the PCB. Um, let's actually put them somewhere where I can't blow them away. Oh, as I drop them on the floor. Change the housing where somebody will have trouble. Oh, gotcha. I have actually, I must have some V1s on another board because I had a problem once where you push hard enough and the wire snaps out. Okay. All right, so we got a couple of these here. So let me let me actually show you what I'm talking about here. The, the um, WS2812B LED has a corner on it You can kind of tell here, but there's one corner that is kind of silvery. Um, interesting. Have you tried the C3 stabs? I actually like those a lot. Um, let me actually zoom this in a bit too, so you'll be able to see, and I'll scooch this to the right. So, here we go. So what you want to do when you're soldering up these, yeah, they're kind of nice. They're, they're, um, the wire fits in ridiculously tight. Um, which is very nice, actually. Um, I do like that. It feels very secure. Like once you get it snapped in, it actuates just fine, but like it is, holy moly, is it tight. Um, so on this PCB, on the solder mask, or actually on the um, silk screen, you can see there's also kind of a corner here. Uh, I think so. Um, the, the difference is that the plastic housing and like the material, like the wall thickness seems to be thinner. So they can tend to be maybe a little rattly in that regard, but um, yeah, they uh, they I I like them. Um, they seem to work pretty well. I have a feeling they would actually, not that this is necessarily relevant, but they um, they probably would have fit better in a GMMK Pro than the Duroc stabs because I think they're a little narrower as well. So that might have been something interesting to try is is testing out the C3s there, but. Um, yeah, so we're, we're basically just aligning the WS2812B's little corner with the one on the solder mask. So what I like to do to solder these on, and there's, there's plenty of ways to do this. I'll typically just put solder on one corner and then I will uh, and then I will solder up. I'll remelt that. So you can see I just put a little blob right there and then I come in with my LED and then I remelt it and drop the LED. And that usually is enough to just pin it down. And then I can go ahead and do the other corners. There we go. Yeah, it's not that bad. It just takes some getting used to. I really, really, really like this um, TS-80P soldering iron. It's powered by USB-C. It's nice and light and portable and uh, has replaceable tips so you can get you know, a chisel tip or whatever you want. Um, so it's great, I highly recommend it. Let me go ahead and put a corner blob on every one of these so we can tack them all down. Oh, and also the orientation changes, so I need to make sure that I pay attention to that. Also, what am I doing? Let me turn on my fan. My voice is probably gonna sound terrible now because whenever I talk, you'll hear the fan noise. 
but I'd rather you hear terrible audio than me breathe in fumes. So, so there's that. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Great. Nice. Yeah, it's not that bad. It's, it's uh, just takes a little getting used to, you know. I uh, my dad's an electrical engineer, and I work at an electrical engineering firm. So I have uh, I am I'm a software dev, but I've done quite a bit of soldering over the years. So. I'm very fortunate in that I, I got comfortable with it like early on, but um, props to anyone who goes out and learns it later in life. Like it's a great skill to have. I soldered that one on incorrectly. There we go. Let's actually, uh, some pressure on it. Try to get it flat. What we don't want to do is heat it too long and lift a pad, but we also don't want to um, have it be protruding too far so that it uh, interferes with the acrylic mid layer. inspect that we may let's circle back on that one if we need to let's grab another led check our orientation there we go that's a good solid one Practicing with my old Anpo 2 and getting a YMDK wing. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Um, if you can uh, mess around with an existing piece of electronics, like that's what I did as a kid was just like butts around with with stuff that was already existed or I didn't like care too much about. Um, you can try soldering on that and yeah. YMDK boards are, yeah, I've dealt with a few of those and yeah, just desoldering that and like a switch swap on a, on a board will teach you a lot. Done a few switch swaps in my day. Yeah, dude, those desoldering guns are so nice. Um, I use 380, that can be a bit spicy. Um, anywhere in the like 350 to 380 Celsius range. So whatever that converts to um, is, I found works. Um, that's almost pushing the limits of this little uh, soldering iron, but it, it works pretty well for me. And then that Hako desoldering pump is so nice. If you do a lot of rebuilds, it's uh, it's a game changer. I'm gonna go ahead and say that if so if I'm gonna have to guess that something on this board won't work, right off the bat, it's gonna be these LEDs. But that's okay, they're easy to fix. <laughs> yeah, dude, do it. It's super fun. I just, uh, I took a Vortex race apart last week and uh, put it back together and 
Uh, I might have a, uh, I do, I do some keyboard rebuilding for clients sometimes. And so I might have a Corsair coming through here pretty soon. Big boy, 100 and, 104 switch. Nice. That's such a huge, that's such a game changer. I was talking about earlier in stream how like, yeah, get your stabs right. And then the rest will follow. Got a wild one. We have to switch to the pliers. Okay. nice when it tacks down finally ah. I say as I knock it off let's get another uh, corner to melt Last one. There we go. Cool. Go on. So It would be amazing if all of those worked, but let's see. Okay, step two is optional to bend and solder in resistors. In fact, I can show you what I'm looking at here. Here's our, uh, here's our build guide. So step two, we are going to skip because we do not need to solder in uh, big LED switches uh, because we're not using the big LED. We're using the rotary encoder and the three key switch um, configuration, which is really cool to get an extra three switches, uh, on a 65% keyboard. I think that's amazing. So let us solder in the reset switch though, which will be nice for reprogramming purposes. Orientation does not matter on switches like this. Let's pop that bad boy in. Oh, hey, thanks for the follow. I appreciate it. There we go. All right. 
That is done. Now we need to solder in the IC sockets and the instructions are clear about this, um, but it is very true and I cannot overstate. Do not solder in the sockets with the ICs installed. Um, that, that is uh, that's a big no-no because you can potentially destroy the socket if you get too much heat running up those legs. That's the key. So what we wanna do, I believe, is install them this way. Like such as. Sounds good, thanks for hanging out, I appreciate it. It's fun to have people chilling with me. Okay, so I'm just gonna start by soldering in uh, two corners, or a corner on each, rather. Just to verify that um, they're on straight before I go ahead and solder on the rest. This one is not, it's not flush, so we will melt and press it. That is toasted. There we go. Okay, so we are good to go on the rest. All right. Oh, hey, what's up? No, it's fun. It's fun, Kyle. I appreciate it. How's packing going? I'm asking for a friend because I have to do it soon, too. All right. Now we got to solder in two capacitors. are all mechanical let me just check one more time just to make sure yep that's it so it's actually these capacitors it seems like they've changed a bit All right, see you in a bit, my dude. We'll see how much progress I've made.
Yeah, I'm a friend of the show and moderator, TRD Kyle, is uh, the recipient of this board, but he is moving from North Dakota to Oregon. So, got a lot going on. All right. Next is the diodes. Also, I need to make sure that I have the IC for this because we ordered him uh, a Nullbits, what's it called? BitC, I believe. Oh, thank goodness. I found it. <laughs> I was freaking out for a second. I was like, is it at the office? Am I going to have to leave the stream and go drive? No, it's not. It's here. We're good. It's chill. All right. So here we have a, a, approximately a billion diodes. That's not true. There's one per key. So there's probably about 70 here because it's usually 60, 65 to 67 keys and a 65%. And then three extras here. So probably around 70. What you can do that is very helpful is to take four popsicle sticks because coincidentally, one of these glass diodes tends to be about the width of two popsicle sticks. So you take four, you glue two of them together exactly the same distance apart, and then you glue two more on the outside, but you offset them such that they make this little channel in the middle. That's the height of one of these diodes. And then you just, insert the diodes into the channel and then bend the wires around. And it actually makes a perfect bend for service mounts. So you can do them in batches rather than one at a time, which is a nightmare um, to do. So we're gonna do that. I may do a lot of dumb stuff on this channel, but this is one that I feel like is a reasonable choice to make. This music is not the Wii music, but it really sounds like it, doesn't it? ST Steven Shadow Man. It's not an artist I regularly listen to, but they are on Musicbed, a service that I licensed my music from. So there you go. Fun fact for you. Okay, so here's what I'm talking about. You take your diodes and your diode bender and you just kind of give them a little, give them a little fold over like such, you see? And then you flip it over and hold them down and bend them up. And once they're all at nice little 90 degree angles, you're good to go. Easy as that. Not too shabby, eh? So then you just do it for the rest of your little sections that you've made. Um, and you're good. like I don't know I always feel like these little um, diodes suspended between their leads almost look like you know DNA strands or something kind of cool I don't know I don't know what I'm talking about
All right. So here we have a whole bunch of ready to go chunks of diodes. Easy peasy, squeeze the lemon. So now we're just gonna take this board. And we're just gonna pull off a few at a time. Let's go with, uh, how many are here? Four, five, six, seven. Let's do 10 at a time. Eight, nine, 10. Boom. Let me take my watch off too. I don't wanna scratch this PCB. And sip some coffee just to ensure that my hands are extra shaky. Perfect. All right. So then you got to make sure that the black bar on the diode is facing the top of the PCB on this particular design. Um, diodes are effectively just one way valves for electricity. So the orientation definitely matters. So you just want to stick them through. Try to make them even from top to bottom. Otherwise you'll have a really weird looking board, but using a diode bender like that definitely helps um, make them look more even. And then I like to solder them from the top. It takes a little bit more care to get the um, solder mask to not look gross, but it also makes them look more consistent because if you solder from below, what can often happen is that you have inconsistent amounts of solder kind of spilling through the hole from the other side. So I like to solder them from the top just to get a good consistent look because frankly, I feel like the aesthetic or the appearance of these through hole boards is part of the reason you would even do them. Otherwise, you know, you could just do a surface mount um, pre-built uh, PCB but these are fun, right? That's why I like the Discipline and the Mysterium are so popular. Let's look even. Which, speaking of which, I have several of those on deck, um, which is cool. I have a Switch Couture and a, a Keys.io, so those have cases, I think. Uh, at least Keys.io does. And then kind of a bare bones one as well. So those are neat boards. What I like about this board though, is not only the fact that it has more options in terms of how you wanna do the layout, but also it has a TRRS, which is like that headphone jack on the top, that 3.5 millimeter that you can use to hook up um, a scramble, I believe. I believe it can hook up a scramble, but definitely a tidbit, which is a macro pad or like a num pad. So you can have, one keyboard that can easily attach on a numpad, which is crazy. Like that's such a cool feature. I think if I were to design a keyboard, I would definitely be looking at doing something like that because I think it's so neat. So huge fan of the way these are designed. I think it's one of the coolest keyboards you can buy. And it's also available on Amazon, meaning you can just order it and get it shipped quickly. Like it's not like a, you know, 10 year group buy or whatever like a lot of these tend to be okay those are inserted let us solder them Quick note here, I like to solder just the top first. That gives me at least a little bit of a chance to adjust the alignment before I go in for the second round of soldering. Also, keeping your soldering iron as vertical as possible helps with not like melting down the solder mask and making it kind of shiny.
Okay. That'll definitely need a touch of cleanup. But those be in. And then what you can do once those are soldered in is straighten those on both sides. I find it sometimes easier to use a tweezer to grab them all. Stand them up. And you can just come along with a snipper. Flip them all off. How neat is that? That's pretty neat. There you go, nice and flush. Easy peasy. Lemon to the squeezy. Just be careful when you're doing this that you do not scratch a trace or you will be running some wrapping wire somewhere and wishing you hadn't done that. There we go. All right, first 10 done. Only 60 more to go, question mark? Something like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, ouch, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Yeah. All right. Hopefully this will start picking up speed as we move along, but you know, I don't want to rush this because this is a critical part of this board looking good. I also like to insert the component as far as it will go and then splay the legs, which kinds of kind of pins it down. So that it doesn't really move on you. It gives you a little bit of leeway, but it won't, uh, it won't run away on you. All right. Cool. I apologize if this part feels a bit tedious, but it is part of the build process, so these things take time. You know? I like to think of it as contemplative and chill. I'm not a very high energy streamer, but I think if I was, I don't know that I would be building keyboards. I'm an old man. He's just here to be, to be chill and build, build stuff. It is funny how it's, I, I'm not, an, I'm not old, but I'm, I mean, it's funny how young so many of these streamers are, like some of the huge, huge streamers. It's like, I remember hearing one being like, oh, I'm about to turn 25 and I'm like, I'm about to be, I'm getting close to 30 here. Not that that's that much older, but still. It's funny, it's a young, really a young platform, which is cool. A lot of room for growth. And uh, yeah, it's neat. I like Twitch. I think they're all pretty lined up.
Great. You know, I need, I think the biggest hurdle right now is, um, thanks for asking. It's, uh, it's getting 50 followers. Um, cause I've, at least when I was streaming more regularly, cause streaming once a week, I generally had the viewership and the time streamed just cause keyboard streams take a while, but you just need to have 50 followers first. So we'll get there. I mean, I'm on a, I'm on a pretty steady track. So my best estimate says that by like October, I should be. I should be there, um, which is exciting. Uh, I don't know that um, I will technically be there um, at that time, just due to the fact that I have enough like life events. Like I'm I'm moving in late August, early September, so it's like, am I? How long is it going to take before I'm back at streaming? I don't really know. I still actually haven't even sorted out my internet service provider because here in Montana, there's not a ton of options. I mean, I, I assume that's the case in a lot of places with like these big monopolies, but there is one fiber company that I'm really hoping has internet, but I haven't been able to get a hold of them because they're really busy. So yeah, it's a lot of things, but I'm thinking that hopefully by October, I'll be close, if not there, so. I mean, I'm already close in terms of followers. I think I just need to be consistent with my stream schedule. So yeah, that would be cool though. I have no idea what, uh, what really the benefits are of being an affiliate when you're a streamer this size. Like it's more for me just like, oh, that's fun. You know, I did it. I don't, I don't know. I, a part of me is also like, maybe it'd be nice to not because I think it does do the sub button, yes, I am, uh, but but I think it also allows Twitch to roll ads when people click on your channel. And in fact, I actually don't know if they do it now anyways. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I guess my thought being, you know, I'm not really thinking that this is gonna be a source of income for me. It might be fun to have emotes, but like if someone has to watch an ad to get to my channel, uh, I appreciate that, that's really kind of you, but I think for like a casual, just like clicking on my channel, I'd prefer them not to watch ads. I know a lot of uh, streamers will actually do like an ad break uh, at least once every hour, just because then Twitch doesn't show ads um, when people click on your channel. But I swear like if, I don't know, like that Tomorrow War trailer is just killing me, man. Like it looks so bad, that movie looks so bad, but. It's wild. I actually saw like there was one channel that um, it was like a trailer for Tomorrow War. And then there was like a survey where you could answer a question about like it was like if you got drafted in the Tomorrow War, what would you do? Would you run? Would you fight? Blah, blah, blah. And then if you if you responded, it gave the streamer bits, which I was like, that's crazy. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of wild. It's like, you know, very deep integration with ads. Obviously, the Tomorrow War is an Amazon show and and this is an Amazon platform. So, you know, they can do that kind of thing. But I was just like, that's crazy that like the streamer is now getting paid for your participation in an active advertisement. I've never seen anything kind of like that before. I do do the Google, like, have any of y'all ever done this? The like Google opinion rewards? I've been doing this for years. Uh, and that's actually pretty neat. You just download the Google opinions app, you sign in. And then I think it's mostly based on your, your GPS history, but like, if you go somewhere, um, it will then later be like, hey, did you go to Staples? And then you say, yes. And it was like, when did you go there? And you'd be like, I went yesterday. And you'd be like, did you make a payment? Yeah, I did. Did you, you what did you use? And you say, I used a credit card. And then it's like, do you have the receipt? And I, I don't really keep receipts. So it's like, you say, no, I don't have the receipt. And it's like, cool, here's 40 cents that you can use on the Google Play Store. So I've actually, I've bought a lot of like movies and TV shows and apps over the years with just like Google opinion rewards, which is pretty neat. Um, so I have like 50 bucks right now in, in um, opinion rewards. So it, uh, it's a neat program. And it's funny too, how I think living in Montana, I probably get fewer than I normally would. Cause every time I travel, uh, I get tons and tons and tons of them. So I think, I think the, um, oh, fair enough. 
That's that's kind of you. I really appreciate it. I, it's weird to me that someone would want to give me money. You know, I don't know. It's like I can see it for like some streamers, but I don't know. It's that's just a mind blowing concept. So that's that's kind of crazy. I really appreciate that. Super kind. Yeah, I don't have a dono button. I do. I mean, you know, all of the. Um, the boards that you see me build are supported because oftentimes they're client builds or because I have a full-time job and I just, I do it cause I love it. Um, and it's funny. I think a lot of the big, even the big keyboard streamers like Alex Otos are that way where it's like, he's got a full-time job, you know, like he doesn't, uh, I know like Teha, I think is full-time keyboard streamers, but like Alex is pretty big too. And, um, he, uh, he just does it cause he loves it and he has a day job and that's kind of where I'm at too. So. I don't know if I would ever get beyond that, but I do enjoy this, so never say never, I guess. Okay, let's see some of these be a little bit straighter. There we go. Just make sure they're all pretty snug and parallel. Cool. That's cool. Yeah, that's really kind of you. What's wild to me is like um, that you you sub to individual channels, right? So you could potentially be paying up to $5 a month for however many channels you are supporting. Um, obviously it goes more directly to content creators than a lot of situations, but I guess my mind goes to like, oh, Hulu is like, what is it? I, I, it can be as low as $5 a month if you're a student or something like that. So it's like, there's so much content there versus like on a per streamer basis. Um, but at the same time, I guess if I watch a film on Hulu or a show that was made by a small content creator, they probably don't see nearly as much of it as a streamer would um, if they're getting a sub. I also don't know what the split is um, between Amazon and the content creator when when a sub comes in either but I've heard anywhere from 50 50 to like 70% streamer 30% Amazon or the opposite so I, I don't really know but but I agree with you I actually do tend to prefer like the chiller or relaxed streams although one trend I've never been able to I don't know ASMR dude it just makes my skin crawl I, I guess I could see how some people might find it relaxing and like my wife finds it relaxing, but oh my word, it just like, it freaks me out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. I don't know why I arbitrarily chose 10, but it's a nice round number and my monkey brain likes round numbers. Can you do like predictions and polls before you're an affiliate? I agree. My wife's a painter and, and our original plan was to have her do painting streams on this channel as well. And I think eventually we will. Cool. I think eventually we will. Um, but you know, obviously she's busy with school right now. So, but she does really cool painting. I've probably seen, um, 
if you go back and look at some of the VODs around my YouTube, you'll see like paintings in the background and um, she's got she's got paintings in a restaurant here in town. So she gets commissions from that, which is cool. But I ask about the polls or predictions because I want to put a prediction out for how many <laughs> of these underglow LEDs will work when we plug this board in because I think that would be a funny one. Or even, will the board work first try? Yeah, um, let me link it in chat real quick. She's got it on an Instagram page. It is interloper.art. I believe. There we go. Cancel. Wait, can I not post to my own chat? Hold on. What's going on? My whole Streamlabs is locked up. This is bizarre. Well, it can still do it from Twitch. This is so weird. Does my do my scene switching still work? Yeah, it does. Okay, there you go. That is her Instagram for her artwork. Which, yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay, yeah. That'd be fun to have uh, to have polls as an affiliate. That would be really neat. Okay. I have no idea why Streamlabs is like completely not working. This is really bizarre. Like the UI for me is totally frozen, but I can still switch scenes with my uh, macro pad. Interesting. Well, I guess I'll keep the stream open on another tab just so I can watch the chat, but there we go. Okay, back to work, back to business. Oh, Streamlabs just refreshed. There we go. That was really bizarre. Yeah, so our original plan was, and still is, it was kind of one umbrella. So I, um, I agree. I think, I think we wanted to do painting and keyboards, and I also do, I screen print T-shirts in my garage. So mostly for tax purposes, we created Interloper Creative as an actual company that all of that could live under. Um, so um, yeah, I want to get her like a wireless lab mic, so that she can do like a painting stream. So I think that'd be super fun. I always get an in-ear stuck. I'm gonna, let me hook it over my ear here. There we go. The other thing that's nice about the soldering iron is that it heats up lightning fast.
There we go. Right? She, she does a lot of different stuff, too. She's really good at, like, kind of pop art stuff or has been doing more of that lately. But also, yeah, just those, like, funky animals with colors and um, they're very unique. So it's been nice to have them up at an actual restaurant so that, you know, people have been able to see them and she can get client work. Um, she painted a, a lady's dachshund. Or however you pronounce that? A wiener dog which is pretty cool and I don't know if she has a photo of that one posted or not but it was kind of a bunch of newspaper clippings with a pink dachshund on top and she even she'll do some like impressionist stuff and it's pretty cool halfway done as far as I can tell one two three six ten. all right I think it's pretty cool to um, have your wife be a painter because there's just kind of a revolving door of interesting artwork on our wall because usually when it's like a commission or something she's selling, it gets to be on our wall for a few days and that's super fun to me to like have all kinds of different art cycle through the house. And I feel like I've grown to appreciate a lot more art a lot more too because I am an engineer and you know, I don't know. I, I do love art and like creating, but especially paintings, I never really understood. Um, it's just so far above my head. Like you don't really understand, even though you recognize it's something that you could never do. You don't really understand the extent to which you could never do it. I guess if that makes any sense at all. So when you see, when you see it actually being done and you're like, Oh my goodness, this is so impressive. And I understand why like a Rembrandt is worth what it is. The three predictions that I would have would be, will it turn on when I plug it in? A. Uh, will How many of the LEDs will work on the bottom out of the 10, I believe, nine or 10, would be B. And C, how many keys will work? What percentage? I have no idea.
Just getting a war hammer and painting the figures is fun. Then yeah, look at some professionally. Yeah, for sure. I um I've never played Warhammer, but I play a lot of Gloomhaven and a lot of board games in general. But um that's one game where I'm like I'm always wanting to to paint my minis, but I'm worried. I'm like, well now I'm going to have to play <laughs> twenty scenarios with this mini that I think looks terrible because I tried to paint it and I ruined it. That's my at least my paranoia of like I'm gonna mess it up and I don't want to because I spend so much time like my dear dear Craig Hart. If I had painted him badly, that would be so sad. Warhammer seems really fun though. I've, I've seen some, uh, uh, just out of curiosity on YouTube, I've like looked up how the gameplay works and it seems really fun. But it also seems like a huge money pit if you're not careful. And goodness knows I have enough money pits in my life. Yeah, I think it might be interesting to like pick up some like used Warhammer stuff and just mess around. I mean, that's that's what I do with Magic the Gathering, you know? It's like, I'll just buy um, just used cards or like a box of cards that are just like worthless, like the bulk stock that they'll sell off. And then I'll just like put together stupid decks and play with them uh, with my friends and just like, I think that's really fun of like not worrying about which card's valuable or whatever. It's always fun. Magic is a pretty cool game. Like value of the cards aside, because I know it's huge here on Twitch. Oh, dude, I wouldn't be mad about that. That'd be fun. Yeah, I have, I have, uh, I even started trying to like organize it at one point, but then I'm like, what am I doing putting I have tons of magic cards and trying to put it all in binders when I don't even know. It's like, what, what's worth keeping, what's worth. But then it's like, yeah, it's fun. Just sort it by color, build a build a multicolored deck. It's super cool. But yeah, I'd be down. Shoot me a message on Discord. I can, uh, I'd love to play with some more magic cards. Thank you, I appreciate it. All right, I realize you probably can't really see what I'm doing when I'm bending these leads because I feel like I'm probably pulling it off frame, but I push it in, hold it with my thumb, and then I bend one up and one down and then they all end up looking like this, which holds them in place.
pretty good stuff. Oh, cool. Future site. Oh, fun. Dude. Absolutely. I, and I'll totally pay for shipping, too. I'll, uh... That'd be super cool. It's very kind of you. Thank you. What a nice... What a nice chatter. I feel like you see a lot of people in Twitch chats that are just... You never know. I live out in the boonies in Montana. That might be fun sometime to like stream a just playing magic with my wife it's funny because she um she really likes playing white which tends to be a lot of creatures like unicorns and such and i really like black and blue which are very much about like necromancy and death and murder and um popper what's popper um and and so she really hates it when i play against her because i kill all of her creatures but i think it might be fun to give her like red or green you know, just go to town. Commons only 60 card decks. Oh, dude, that sounds amazing. I would be all over that. That sounds like a super fun format. I have a friend who plays a lot of Commander, but 100 card decks seem like a lot. Three, four, five, six. Okay, 20 bucks. That's amazing. I'm all over that. Magic is a fun game. I also saw that it was um, Turing Complete. Uh, like it's one of the only games that's complex enough to be considered Turing Complete, i.e. you can create a machine within the system of the game that can add and subtract and do basic arithmetic and store data, which is insane, but it's possible. I've also never met someone at like my local game store who was into magic, who was like really mean about it or condescending, which is, which is interesting. Um, they're usually like, oh, you should come play with us. Like you so much fun, which is really, really cool to be like kind of welcomed, you know? I'm sure that those, there's people like that out there, but man, it's been, Mostly just, and Warhammer is the same way too. I've only ever met people who were like, oh yeah, I'll give you some Warhammer stuff. You can try it out. And so it's really cool. I feel like just in general, the board game community tends to be really, uh, really welcoming, I guess, which is awesome. We have an awesome game store here in Bozeman, a Rooks that's they're very much like, but it's funny how, yeah, I have a lot of, of board games, but it's like there's always the like couple that you get sucked into, like Gloomhaven or it's usually the legacy games, but also Scythe. I play a lot of Scythe and some of those that it's just like you always go back to. And Root. Wouldn't it be funny if I found out I had soldered all these in upside down? It would just be so funny. I would end stream. I just checked. We're good. Don't worry, Kyle.
Infinity Popper deck. A bunch of artifact creatures for free. Oh, interesting. Interesting. That's weird. I've never, that's really cool. I've never seen anything like that before. So that's the thing that I struggle with is I'll usually be like, I know little enough about magic that I will, um, <laughs> I'll just assemble a deck where my only goal is to make sure that they're all in the same color group and that, you know, I don't have multiples of the same or whatever. And it's like, my strategy is fairly minimal or it'll be like, oh, I have this one card that I'd like to get to that's just like a massive creature, you know, but I'd love to get a little bit deeper into the strategy. Like you're talking about here of, um, you know, every, even your lands or artifacts, like something really interesting like that. Cause I feel like there's a lot of room for creativity in building decks and magic, which is really cool. Um, I always love when there's more than one outlet for creativity, you know? Like, just for people who really love expressing creativity, it's the more outlets, the better, which is really neat. You can see some fascinating stuff. Tron, what's Tron? Educate me. One, one, one equals seven. Okay, I need some context here. Okay, a lot of land and big creatures on turn three. Okay, okay, interesting. That sounds fun. Three land, Urza lands, and when you have them all usually on turn three, you get seven mana from them. Oh my word. You can get seven mana from three lands? Bruh. That's pretty neat. You like my bruh cam? I've spent literal minutes on it. And at half the time it doesn't work. So it really came through for me here. Thanks buddy. That sounds like my style. Especially big guys with trample. I like trample. So I like green, but I also like blue. I like, or black. I like the necromancy stuff. I think it's fun and creepy. Don't take that out of context. Don't clip that. Nice, so good old fashioned slug fest. I like it. I can't get my fume extractor to turn off. That's neat. It's running on a Wi Fi switch. Something is unhappy in the system. Okay, so this last diode is interesting because underneath, here, I'll show you, I'll zoom in. Underneath the spot where the diode goes is a spot for a TRRS jack, meaning that the through hole can't come through this pad. So this pad is, whoop, this pad is surface mount only right here. So what I've done is I've clipped that leg off and I might clip even more and then it uh, it should work. Hey, I turned off my fume extractor just in time for me to solder something else. 
So that's the goal here. Perfect. Whoa. All right. Right on. That's cool. You must not be... <laughs> Where do you work? I'm guessing you're not in the US if you're currently at work at what is for me almost 8 p.m. on a Sunday. Nice. Oh, okay, okay. Dude, all right. Then never mind. That is a thankless, constant job. Could be anywhere. I appreciate you chilling with me then. That's cool. <sighs> Tell your hotel guests I say hi. <laughs> All right, let's see. Where are we at? Um, Next, I think, yeah, okay. So yes, the instructions say flash the MCU before soldering it so that you know that it's working properly. So let's bust this bad boy out. Switch over to our programming mode. I, 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 well, yeah, you'll probably not be able to see much of what I'm doing, but I'll trust me. It's all smoke and mirrors. We'll plug in this bit C. It lit up. Here. Um, I don't know what it will enumerate as, but we can pull up via, see if it sees it. But I'm guessing it won't and we will need to flash it. I just heard something disconnect. Oh, dude, that's so nice of you. Yeah, so I think it's just coming up as not a keyboard, meaning we need to flash it. So let's do this. Let's go to, I might actually have a nibble firmware already because like I said, I built one of these before. So QMK toolbox, let's check. Let's get this out of here. Let's go programmers. I wanna show QMK, there it is. Hello, bud. Okay, so it is, it has found it. So then we need to pick a firmware file from it. Projects, no. HK, do we have it? Nibble, hello. Nibble default, perfect. All right, so then we just need to turn on auto flash and then hit the reset pin with the tweezers. So let's say a little prayer and let's ground the reset pin and see if that works. Uh, hello? A, programming it, setting up nibble. <gasps> it's working, it's working. Okay, I believe, yes, nibble is ready to go. So officially this thing works, thank you. Yeah, that's true. It's just gathering dust, I've, yeah. Okay, hold on, story time, story time. I've never played D&D &D before, or rather, I had never played D&D before. Let me solder while I'm doing this. Let's not waste time. Uh, previously, but then last, was it last weekend or the weekend before? Either way, a friend of mine invited me over to play some D&D &D with my wife and his wife. And I was like, that sounds great. He has a friend who DMs, perfect. He did a one-off scenario and uh, he set it up for us. He created a bunch of characters that we could pick from and he had, he's got his own world that he's already built, but he he was generous enough to, yeah, create this little one-off for us, which was really fun. So we, you know, I was like a, a dwarf paladin or something and, you know, 
you pick your characters and you start playing. If you've ever played D&D, I'm sure this is remedial at best. Uh, I still don't fully understand how it works, but it was very fun. You're role playing, you're having a good time. Uh, we were on some mission to explore some fallen dwarven city and, and we had been given a couple of items, one of which was a portable hole. And what a portable hole is, is like this pocket dimension. It's like a little piece of silk that you can put on the ground. Then it becomes like a 10 foot diameter hole that's about 10 feet deep. And then you can just like fold it up and it's only weighs as much as the silk, but it's like, it's like a portal to another dimension that's a really small dimension that you can just fill with stuff. Pretty cool tool. And at one point we encounter this gemstone that's like one of us put their hand in it and you can tell it's like a it's like a gateway to another dimension. And that dimension you stick your face through, it's full of treasure. And we we're like, oh neat, lots of treasure. But this is clearly like a side quest. So we were going to circle back around and collect all the treasure later. So I suggested, well, why don't we just put this portable hole on the ground and then um, wrap the portable hole around this gem that is also a por portal to another dimension. Seems easy enough. You take the gem with you, you get back to where you, you know, you're know you supposed to go, and then you just have the gem later to explore. Well, apparently in D&D, if you... <laughs> If you enclose a portal to another dimension inside a portal to another dimension, it breaks space and time. And then you have to roll to find out where you end up. And we, we, we ended up ending, I don't even know where we ended up, but we died pretty much immediately. It was brutal. And, and the DM's face when I suggested that was just priceless. It was like, I never expected these first time players to do something so stupid <laughs> as to attempt to enclose another dimension in a portable hole. So that was neat. That was a good time. I really enjoyed it. Would do again for sure, but there you go. Fun little story from the weekend. All right, let's solder on this bitsy. Like the MCU headers, I like to solder the corners on first. Make sure everything is aligned. Let's get it. Let's get the headers on on the underside. Okay, 
MCU is soldered. I don't know if you could even see that or if you could just see the back of my dome. <sighs> okay, so. We need to get these little MCUs in. Are they the same? Yes, they are. So we just need to put them in their sockets. The little circular cutout on the top aligns with the one on the socket. Nice. One of the things that I like on this PCB, and I've seen it on several, I love it when PCB designers do this, is that um, the spot where this nibble or this bitsy attaches, it's got these little headers, right? And these headers are just a row of pins that are separated with a plastic housing, but they'll stagger the holes slightly off of center left to right so that when you push the header in, it kind of holds it in with friction because it's the tolerances are like, tight enough on those on those headers that it just kind of like splays them a bit which is very handy for soldering like it just it just makes everything way easier so i really appreciate that okay so <laughs> let's plug this in and see if it works first and foremost every single led is working who could have predicted this if i was an affiliate we would have known that. Secondly, and it was really the first prediction, would it work when we plugged it in? Which is yes. Thirdly, let's close QMK toolbox. Let's open VIA again, and let's use some tweezers to test the key mapping. This is great. This is so great. All right, let's get the tweezers of truth and let's find out home and page up page down excellent arrows yes backspace let me turn on the key sound so i can hear it i don't think you'll be able to hear it This will actually be the encoder. That These are probably layer keys, yeah. Okay. That's Windows. That's Backspace, 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 Space. Space. I'll need to definitely reprogram this. We've got some weirdness going on here. Uh oh, what is this? I actually don't know what that is or if that's even hooked to anything. One neat thing about this key mapping is that the little LED on the nibble. Oh, hold on. I'm sorry. You couldn't even see this. Here's our, there we go. The little LED on the nibble is, is bound to whether or not caps lock is on, which is really handy. Oh, I must have, there must have been a key bind that was, that switched scenes on me. That's funny. Well now, in a shocking turn of events, I think everything is working. I'm kind of speechless. This is amazing. This never happens to me. 
Don't get used to it. <laughs> um, okay, well, a couple things then. Um, we have tested that. We need to... We need to do a couple things. Let's get... We need the optical encoder in. I also need to... Let me text the client and see if he wants a stepped caps lock key. Want a stepped caps lock or normal? Also want the hookup for the uh, macro tidbit if you ever get one on the left or the right boom okay um great then let us do some other stuff let's let's attach these stabilizers um i think we also need to attach the there it is um some standoffs Should be nice. And then the encoder, obviously, and a few other things. Let's put some tape down, shall we? Yes. Okay. Just a couple little pieces just to Give it that extra little 5% of sound benefit. I believe it's this. And this. Oh, there's a little bit of lube there. Let's get that out of here. Do backspace. Let's go a little bit wider than that. Actually, that's the tape is too small. I received a text message. Let's see what it says. Like keycap, I'm using normal caps right now. What side does the USB-C come in? USB-C is on the left. Probably same side as the normal key hookup. caps keycap and go with that okay cool so usb usb or trrs jack we will solder on on this side which is right here this is what you would use to add an accessory um so yeah right now it's the tidbit we'll put them on right there Let's get that soldered in real quick. I'm sure this is, oh, it's still awake. Hello. Ah. 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 Nice. All right. I'm gonna 
else we got? <laughs> oh yeah, okay. He's an architect, so he uses caps a lot. So we will give him the normal caps key. Let's make sure this is the right. Yeah, that is right. Okay, a little bit more tape. So we will do the enter key. Which is right here. Last one might be a little too thin. I might replace that one. All right. I believe box royals are a three pin switch, not a five pin switch. So we will need to be extra careful when we're soldering them in just to make sure everything's straight and pleasant to look at and we can we can bust out a few keycaps just to verify that. So we'll probably start with the mods. Okay. All right. So, got that in. We can proceed to mount our stabs. Chris Majura song. It is. He's a cool guy. He's the one who told me about Musicbed. I asked where I could license his music for Twitch, and he recommended it. And it's been great. Every time I post one of these build streams on YouTube, um, uh, Musicbed has the URL for my YouTube channel. So whenever all these copyright claims come in, they just immediately deal with it. So I'll wake up the next morning and have like 30 emails that are like, hey, we. Clear to claim on your video, which is cool. It's harder to get monetized on YouTube than Twitch, I think, though. So I have, you know, obviously there's no no income for them to be claiming, but all the same, it's kind of nice that they got your back. Okay, it's another stab. All right, Get a couple more screws out here. And then we will check with the plate installed how the stabilizers sound and just kind of general alignment. Let me also bust out an alcohol wipe here and try to clean off this PCB as soon as this part is done because this is the part that gets kind of messy with the lube. Um, so you want to clean it after this. It's also just nice to help clean up the solder mask anyways because it melts a little bit when you solder around it and it can leave these like shiny globs all over. Okay, there's that. Let's get a swab here.
looking sharp. Okay. All right. Excellent. Let's make sure this still turns on. Yes, it does. Okay. So then we got to assign, uh, I think we need to attach some standoffs. Yes. Screw to that, together the M2 by three standoffs using the M2 by three screws. So let us procure those. They are nicely labeled. Oops, dropped my fan. It's not my biggest fan, but it is a good fan. Shameless dad joke. Okay, so these are M, M2 by three. These are also M2 by three. So we need the thir quantity 13. Two by three, 15, two by three, 15, two by three. I think there's just excess which is great for when I lose them. And two by six, these are screws and standoffs, two by six, two by six. So these are two by three, eight of them, eight of each of these, and 15 of each of these. And I believe these are the same. So let's attach these. Like these little containers, they're magnetic. Which is very cool. Come on, bud. Sounds good. Thanks for hanging out. That's yeah. It's always fun to have you in my chat, so I appreciate it. Have a good night. noise these little standoffs are here to hold the PCB and the plate apart uh, the bottom plate that is the uh, the top plate is separated by the switches I don't believe it has any holes in it at all those one two three I'm sure I'm gonna miss some but we'll check it against the bottom plate and see how they align Okay, 
is so this is actually an upside down view on this uh there's a guide here for where exactly they all are So the bag of them too. They're just little guys. Okay, we are quickly getting there. Oop, all right. So we got those three on the bottom row. We have one over here we need to get. There's two down there. I'm assuming these are all right, but we'll see. Okay. Two, three. Another one over here. Got the one, two, three on the top row. There's this one here. We will flip it over and do it kind of in the same orientation that it was presented, but. Two, three here. Little jog there. Two in the middle. Those three down here. These two. I believe that's everything. Great. Okay, so now we attach the stabilizers. Well, we already did that. Optional insert hot swap sockets. That would be, um, that'd be like uh, um, mill max sockets, which we're not going to do. So the next thing is to install our switches, which will be mounted to this plate. Um, I believe this encoder might need to go first. Yeah, I can't really fit through the hole, so let's get the encoder on there. still warm. Let's straighten out this leg a little bit. It got kind of munched. So I tried to shove it in there. Great. Let's solder that up real quick.
All right, encoder is in. Let's just check to see if it works real quick. If it does, it'll turn the volume up and down on my PC, I believe, and it does. Great. You'll love to see it. Okay, so now we gotta snap some switches into the switch plate. So let's grab our switches. Here we go. Some box royals from Novel Keys. They are a tactile switch with the box shape. So let's put it, let's do this. Let's snap in a couple corner switches. Uh, and then let's put in the stabilizer switches after that. I believe there's only, which configuration are we gonna do? I think we're going with C, we're doing that one. Let's do this corner here as well. So like four basic corners. solder in this one first. Let's just make sure it's nice and squished in there. <laughs> ah, don't have my fan on. Okay. Let's get the, uh, let's get the ventilator in here. Okay, so there's the second switch. So that's two corners. Let's get the other two in and then our plate will be nice and snug. it was going to be wily. Sometimes you can um, press on the switch itself while it is um, while you're heating the leg and it'll snap in properly if it wasn't going to which it wasn't. Okay great so there's those let's toss a couple keycaps on. Like I said, we're using Cam Wraith. So first of all, we need to figure out where the space bar switch needs to go. Use a nice 2U that we can use. All right. Nice. I think this will be a nice sounding board. Okay, so a couple things. Let's get the space bar figured out first. Where did I put that space bar? I just had it. What? How do you lose an entire space bar? There it is.
There we go. Okay, we have. Let's just confirm too. So spacebar, 6.25U spacebar, only compatible with C, which is fine because that's what we're going with. So that would be slot E. Okay, let's verify for sanity. That is indeed correct. Very nice. Let's get that. Well, let's test how it sounds first. Pretty good. Let's solder it. I'm feeling it. I'm, it's feeling good. Test that sound one more time. No click. Nothing weird. Very nice. You'll love to see it. Okay. So there's that one. Let's grab a 2U key. Let's solder in the other two 2U switches. and make sure that they are straight. The really important ones too are the alphas and the mods because the stabilizers kind of help straighten out the key a little bit. I mean, not perfectly, but they help. But especially the mods. Okay. Nice. Okay, there's that one. Sounds excellent. And like I said, if these were five pin switches, I would be much less concerned. I mean, I, I still always check just to make sure everything lines up correctly, but, but in this case, it's like especially important. Very nice. Okay. So I think we're using the C configuration, so I will load every switch with C. That would mean um, that's the particular like modifier layout we're using, which would be the three mods on the bottom left and then the single 6.25U space bar. And then we'll do the H on the other side, which would be three 1U mods, just to give the most flexibility. And then we'll put um, mod keys on those, just to check them before we do a solder. couple one use put okay 
Like I said, these are uniform profiles, so it really doesn't matter. Let's put one more switch on here too. Just to have a reference, because that one is a completely enclosed one. and square because that tends to be infuriating when they're not. Okay. Great. Cool. Let's do the solder up. Because it's looking good to me. Let's pull up switch hitter real quick, or via, just to make sure that those keys work. Let's reset this. Windows key. Okay, so this will need to be remapped because it's currently set to backspace, and that's set to space. But they do work. Is this not soldered? It is. Is this a... Okay, so now let's pop in the rest of our switches. Um, one important note is we're doing a standard caps lock. No stepping here. Uh, let's also make sure that the tab key is aligned prop or the, the slash, because that is one that doesn't have as much frame around it. Put a wider key on it so it's a little bit more obvious. Let's solder in one leg and then readjust. That's all of the super dangerous ones in terms of being 
misaligned let's just get these all these other three here those are the other ones i would be suspect of but since they're so tightly encased with this plate on the sides i'm actually not that worried but let's just pop some caps on just to be extra extra sure Got it. So let's hit all these with some solder. Got a little guy pop out there, so let's rescue him. This plate is very nice. I am very thankful for it. Makes a huge difference. Make sure alignment is good. And then I'll actually maybe put another keycap under it just to hold it up. solder. Cool. This is exciting. It's looking good. I also really like these keycaps. I've never mounted them before and I think that they're really pretty. So. Let's get some of the edge ones, like the top row, installed. Because those ones might uh, be a bit more of a fighter. Kind of handy to be able to use a switch puller to uh, ensure that they are inserted correctly. This, um, if this plate had standoffs to hold it separate from the PCB, it would actually be this would be a cool opportunity for a hot swap board. You could still do it without because you can, um, as long as you swap it one switch at a time, the plate will never fall. Uh, so you could use like mil max sockets to, to make it hot swap, but that'd be cool. Okay, so we got the top and bottom and the left side. Put 
get those soldered in real quick. Y'all look good to me. Okay, now we just need to snap in the rest of these guys. That was a toughie. Reminiscent of that, uh, if any of y'all were here all the way back when I built that epic with the carbon fiber plate, except for that one was way tighter and I definitely lost some blood trying to get those switches in. I feel like I referenced that build a lot because it was particularly traumatizing. Let's just go ahead and do the, the next few rows. Just get them all in there so we can do one big solder up and then test them all. I need like a thimble for this, you know? It's filling my thumbs. You can't even see what I'm doing. Zoom that baby out. Cool, cool, cool. Just a 
few more beautiful boys. Stuff them in there. I also want to make sure that they're all still straight because even though these are really tight, they can be slightly off. Fan going, let's do a big old solder up. We're getting close here, folks. We're also closing in on the three hour mark. I knew this wouldn't be a short stream, but you know.
All right. I think we did it. But let's find out for sure. Oh, interesting. That changes scenes on me. So it works. That does something to my music. I think this one would probably do. Yeah, there we go. That's a mod to get to the Afro. Cool. So we know the key works. Great. Huh. There we go. Okay, so let's see what's next. I'm getting tired. All right, we need the stabs, the solder. Slide the acrylic into the standoffs. Great, so that would be this bottom acrylic layer. Let's get this soldering iron. Just gonna, we will need it because we're building that BDN9 as well. But this is gonna go right here. And we will need to chip out a little bit of it because we have this, um, this piece here. Hey, it's going well. We got it working first try, which was neat. And then uh, we got it, just got it soldered up. So I will need your input potentially on the programming, although I can also show you how to reprogram it yourself um, because you have some extra keys on here. But right now I'm just peeling, we're doing this acrylic mid-layer. Uh, and so I'm just peeling that a little bit. How are, How's it going for you? How's the packing? Okay, nice. I am building that macro pad tonight too. Although if you'd prefer, I can do that later off stream and then we can, uh, well, I, I can build it tonight and then we'll reprogram it later too with whatever you'd like. But that one is via compatible. So that one's very easy to reprogram with a nice, nice pretty UI. At least I'm, sh I'm pretty sure it is. We can find out. Um, I wonder if this is via compatible now too. I'll have to check. Nice. Okay. Yeah, dude, I feel that. That's the thing we were having with, um, you know, because Madison's moving. My wife is moving for PA school to Spokane on the 3rd of September. And our house is going to be done hopefully by the 20th of August. But it was one of those things where do we, what do we do? Do we move in and then have her immediately move again? Or do we just have her move first? And then, because we... The contract for our condo that we're under right now lets us stay here till September 20th with the back lease. So we just take all of that time and, you know, move her first and me second. That's kind of my inclination, but I don't know. Very cool. I will need to bend a couple of these, um, or rather trim a couple of these little leads here so that 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 plate fits Thank you. 
Yeah, agreed. I agree with Je. Okay. So I think this should align with our standoffs. Yes, it do. So now we just need to attach that. be a little tougher to squish on than others. Oh, oh, I do probably need to trim off the uh stems on the nibble or the bitsy that's probably what's causing this lack of fittage so let's do that real quick this kind of bottom badge here. It's really nice. So we're looking for the these guys, these smaller screws. these guys in. Nice. And this, yeah, this plate works so much better with the screw and stabilizers. I believe the original acrylic, like clear bottom uh, sandwiched piece was more designed for clip-in stabilizers, not the Duroc screw-ins. And so when I built my original one it shattered the plastic a little bit when i clamped it down um which was unfortunate but n again like i said not really that noticeable Okay. This is a good reassurance that I hit all these um, standoffs. Didn't miss one. All right, cool. That feels nice and solid. I like it a lot. So let us attach the standoffs for this top guard next uh, and then I might proceed with actually reprogramming it at this point so I'm guessing these go in through the top layer and these go in through the bottom so Kyle you're still in chat at all um, what do you have a preference on what keys you want to be the three 
the three on the left side. Um, I think one of them is like a modifier so that you can use the number row to be your F row as like that's the default that I have. But um, then the other two above it, I have to like F13 and F14 or something. Um, so, you know, those can be whatever. All three of them can be whatever. Let me know if you've got a preference. Um, otherwise, I'll just show you how to reprogram this guy once you get it. Top down, I was thinking play, pause, next, and back. Great. We can do that. Pretty much just MIDI keys. Cool. And then the, the encoder is currently programmed to volume. So I can leave it at that if you'd like. Cool. Great. And then the left or the right side is home, page up, page down, end. Is what those four are right now. But I can set them to whatever. I'll pull up the key map that I'll be applying so that we can get final approval on that. But that's kind of a rat. Okay. This uses a hex bit, so let's see if I have the right one. Oops, I'm looking at from the other side. It's a tiny bit too small. Nice, there it is. Cool. So let's put the encoder knob on. Yes. It could definitely be the encoder press. I usually do encoder press as mute or pause, and then you do like a one-stop shop for volume, you know? Okay. So these are all spare. Just put them in one single bag, even though that's gonna be labeled incorrectly. Okay, so there's some spares. Get the soldering mat out of here real quick. Ah, all right. The bottom of the 3B function. Okay, cool. Great. Let us, let's try to remap it then, shall we? Uh, let's plug it into my PC and let's see if Via picks it up. And if it does, that means it'll be really easy for you to reprogram it. It does not. Okay, that is all right. So what we're gonna do next is go to QMK configurator. It's config.qmk.fm is gonna be the website. And then you just type in nibble, nullbits co nibble. Okay, so here is the key map that it uses by default. So home, uh, delete. So we want this one to be home, 
um, page up, page down, end. And then we have control windows alt. Function would be here, but let's change this to quantum, I think. And this would be, or wait. Yeah, quantum, that has momentary, right? Momentary, but we wanna to go to layer one. There we go. And then this one would be um, play pause right here. I think it's just called play. Where is it? Play. And then this one is, you said, next and back. Does that sound right? And then clicking this will be mute. What do you think here? And then let's go to layer one. Let's have this be delete. And this just be a pass down. Then RGB toggle, and then the F row, and then this will actually be the tilde key. Okay. So Kyle, let's see. Do you want this to be something other than next? Next track. Because this is gonna be a function key as is. So let's just have this be back. Okay, good, let's do that. So let's go previous track. So top down, play pause, next back. And then mod here is next to space, home page up, page down, and backspace. And then to delete, you hold function and hit backspace. Uh, that seems reasonable. So then you just say compile and it bakes your potato. <laughs> now, I don't know of an easy way to define the encoder. So I'm hoping it still does volume when this is done, we'll find out. Uh, let's also, let me do something real quick. Let's go to HK, nibble, and then we will download the hex file when this is done. Can we make home be delete? Sure. So this guy, so you don't use home at all then. Sure, 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 sure. And then function and that could be home. So let's do home and then function and then this key will be home. So this needs to be delete. There you go, backspace delete. Does that look right? And then home right here. Perfect. Cool. All right, we'll compile that one. <clears throat> so you'll be able to do this yourself too if you need to reprogram this thing. Um, and then I'll show you how to flash the file that it generates. done then we download the firmware and then you hit leave because it gets confused and then it downloads this hex file which I will drag into a folder and then I will rename it as nullbits nibble layout Kyle cool Yeah, all right, now let's open QMK toolbox and we'll close via and we'll switch to that scene. 
All right, and then we will, you should be able to see QMK. Why is it not? Window capture. Nibble, QMK toolbox, there we go. All right, so now you have QMK toolbox. You wanna to open your file here and then check auto flash. And then all you gotta do is on your keyboard when it's plugged in, just take something pointy and press the reset button and it will reset and it will flash and it will come back. And then you uncheck auto flash just in case. And then, then we go to via and we hide this. And then via opens up and then we go to key tester and we make sure that everything works. So mute worked. Oh, next track and previous track are working. It's just not showing up here. And then this is space. This should be modifier. So now these are, yep, exactly. Arrow keys, delete, page up, page down, end, and then function that is home. Caps lock. Perfect. Dude, she be working. All right, so having said that, let's put some keycaps on and do a quick little uh, sound test. All right, A, S, D, F. Oh, and three would not go here. Should be here. There we go. That's, that's where the tab goes. Q-W-E-R-T-Y, Z, don't need that tiny enter, D, symbol shift, don't need that, tab, oh, Thank you. It do be a bit zoomy, don't it?
F G H J K L. C V B N F. Zero. Six. I think I have this upside down. Interesting. I wonder why that arrow is smaller. I really like this keycap set really pretty Seven, eight. This is a tiny, tiny enter. The lower. Get this back. It's two. Oh, we're missing here. Sized arrow key. So we're going with that over here. Ah, one more. Question mark down here. Good to see you, E. And then this guy. All right, that there's a full board. Okay, let's do a little sound test, shall we? Let's 
maybe clean up so I don't burn myself in the middle of a sound test. Okay, let's uh, get this out of here. Let's roll my solder up. Zoom in a little bit. All right. That's pretty nice. I like that. I like it a lot. Um, I think, I think that's where I'm going to call it for tonight. I have a macro pad to build as well, but it's already been three and a half hours and I'm getting tired and odds are I might make a mistake if I'm tired and I don't want that. Nobody wants that. So I might, uh, <laughs> yeah, word. Um, I might stream again or I might not stream that one at all. Um, I'll, Kyle, I'll be in touch about what you want those macros to be, but I'll sh it's that one's even easier to reprogram than this. So um, yeah, thoughts on this board. I love it. I mean, I, I have my own, you know, it's one that's in my collection and I don't see it being sold anytime soon. I have been selling off some of my collection just as I am. Um, you know, consolidating and trying to get stuff out the door. But this one I, I really like. Um, it, I love the fact that you can plug in a sideboard if you want it to be, um, you know, kind of extendable. Um, I, I love the aesthetic of it. And I think, I don't know, I just think it's a really clean looking board. Let me, uh, let me do, let me do something real quick. I want to try to get a, th a thumbnail for my video, which I always forget to do. So let me hide the chat and then hold this thing up. And then let me pull out my focus assist because I have a Bluetooth focus assist. This is a disaster, I've never done this before. Bear with me. Yeah, dude, absolutely. I'm happy uh, Happy it, uh, it came out. It was a pretty painless build, all things considered. Okay, so we hold this up and then I autofocus on it, please. We're definitely gonna need to uh, flip this in post, aren't we? Wow, it is just not focusing. Manual focus it is, there we go. Nice, how neat is that? How neat is that? Ah. Yeah, autofocus focus on black magic cameras is, is abysmal at best, but anywho. All right. 
that's it for tonight thanks for hanging out thanks for chilling with me it's been fun it's been uh it's been neat i've had a good time so yeah but that is where i'm gonna call it for tonight so i will see you guys next time <laughs>